Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. We're here with this, uh, the loaner, the Unity uh, Spectrum Analyzer that they loaned out to me. Um, not sure how I get, long I get to keep it, but make a bunch of videos. This one is going to be taking the first measurement. Kind of give me an idea of what, how to set it up, how to take a measurement, okay? Just kind of like capturing your first signal on an oscilloscope. And, uh, yeah, I think that would be a good start. Let me know what you think in the comments. Appreciate it. And uh, appreciate all your support and all the nice, kind words from the last video. Really appreciate that, guys. Uh, I'm going to try to catch up with some responses to those. But let's jump in this video. Let's see what we think. Now, actually, before I bring you over here, just a few things I want to explain. Uh, on an oscilloscope, you have your time base, right? Your sweep. How many cycles of frequency that you want to capture. So you set your time base for so many, you know, time, milliseconds, microseconds, whatever, across across this x-axis, right? And then across this, you get volts. Well, and, and also, you usually start, like, say, zero in the middle of the screen, maybe at the bottom, and you see some voltage waveform. You want to fill the screen with an oscilloscope. I'm going to have to do some videos on oscilloscopes, too. <laughs> anyway, with the spectrum, it's it's different. And uh, for one thing, instead of time, you put frequency. You know, so with the spectrum, what you have is you're going to have frequencies across here. So you can set up to, say, 100 kilohertz to 1 megahertz, or 1 megahertz to 100 megahertz, something like that. And any frequency that is in that range is going to show a spike on the thing, okay? And instead of your voltage starting at zero volts coming up, you're going to see a spike from here coming up. But really what it's doing is instead of zero volts, it's like some low dB. It depends on the noise for they call it. It's how low of a measurement that the thing can take. Like, you know, it's based on how much noise is coming in, and a bunch of other things, but we'll talk about that kind of stuff later. We don't want to get too deep in this, but basically it's not zero, but it's some low value, say 100 dB, for instance, okay? Negative 100 dB, because it's a, it's a signal that's like attenuated, because it's, that's the other thing. This is going to be in dBs, some kind of dB format instead of volts. So when you get a signal, let's say, for instance, one volt, it would be zero dBs, so it would come up to zero dBs. So on this scope, what we're going to do is we're going to set the bandwidth to see what frequencies we're going to capture, and then we're also going to set the maximum amplitude we think we're going to capture, okay? So if it's an oscilloscope, we'd say zero down here and, you know, five volts per division or something like that. We'd go 510, so we'd go eight divisions, five, 40 volts, so we can see a 40-volt peak. So... It'd be something like that, but instead it's going to be decibels and we're going to have frequency. So just want to explain that because we're going to come over here, take a look at this. All right, guys, let's become familiar with this. First of all, let's just show you the inputs. There's only one input. It's a single channel. That's why the spectrums are usually set up. So uh, these big connectors are, are, are big, right? They're called N connectors for Nancy. And use something like this this is a coupling connector that couples into that you see that little pin and then there's a barrel that's the plus minus and and we you know so it's kind of like a shield within a shield because then we have this shield on the output okay this is an adapter connector which i have a little yellow cap you want to put your caps on these things just like these black caps when you're not using them you want to keep them clean okay because these things are high precision and low noise so you want to keep them that way Okay, so that connector that I showed you, that little connector, it's this little guy right here. It's threaded, okay? And then right there, there's a little pin in there. It's just a little guy. These are called SMA connectors, all right? So this cable right here, he's going to a connector in the back, which is something we're familiar with, a BNC connector, okay? So on the end of this cable, I have an SMA that adapts to this. So the end of the cable, it would look like this guy. See that? And 
then it would adapt to something like that and then that plugs in the back so a lot of new connectors right so this guy here is an output that's a tracking generator we'll talk about that in another video we have a microphone and again we'll talk about that so you can hear things and or you can put the headphones on and we have some uh, USB jacks okay okay so over on this side of the screen we have utilities a tracking generator single and a touch and lock okay and then here's your little multi-purpose dial knob that you can move that around and you can you, you can either do things with this or by the number pad or by things on the screen which we're going to show you in a moment same with the arrows so you you know that helps you select things or you know you can do it by the screen okay so a lot of touch stuff so over here measurement menu it's kind of separated this stuff here is sweep trace marker and peak that stuff's how to take measurements okay and these things here are kind of like the there's the auto button that'll automatically find our signal if we want it to but i don't want to do it that way right now okay i want to well actually here i'll just do it okay so just found our signal so our signals at uh oh see touch screen 10 megahertz 6.92 dbms okay it says marker and amplitude that's what these things are the reference level is 16.78 dbm okay that's here at the top of the line that's the line at the top so this guy here is sitting at 6.9 so it's not quite to the top of the the, the you know the screen okay so we have dbms across here frequencies across here so right here it says span 2 megahertz and over on the left side center is 10 megahertz so our clock is at 10 megahertz right so right there is 10 megahertz and span that means this total span is 2 megahertz so that means if we have 10 here we have 11 here and 9 here okay and the scale is 10 dBs per division okay and it says log obviously so there's a lot of information on this screen you know a lot of utilities here saving and all that kind of stuff resolution bandwidth that's an important thing we're going to talk about that that's how clean this signal can look and video bandwidth also kind of a filter so we'll talk about those things as we go okay so uh, over here save system default this default button is our friend so let's hit that takes us back to where we started okay so now uh, these buttons here these three here are like our horizontal our vertical and our trigger those are kind of you know synonymous to the oscilloscope okay so frequency we hit that and we're already looking at the frequency let's go center frequency and we're gonna go 50 megahertz so I'm just gonna use this pad just to show you can you do it either way and then uh, span see I could say start and stop but there's a reason we like to use center and span often sometimes you know you have the option of using start and stop but we want to do it this way and I want I was going to choose 100 megahertz it's already there but let me just do it anyway so again either here or there now look at this one of our peak is off the screen right so our reference level is 0 dBs right now so we're coming up off the screen because we're at 6 so here let me just change this to 20 dB whoops sorry let's go back escape let's go to amplitude so this is like our vertical amplitude on the scope so over here what we'll go to is reference level and we'll say 20 dBms all right there we go we're back down so now you can see this is 10 dBm right here this first line well the first line underneath the top and so 6.7 whatever is right about there all right so there is our our clock and then the harmonics and you notice um, this is 30 this is going to be uh, 100 megahertz cross so it's 10 20 30 40 so we could have said so since 50 turned out to be the center we could have said uh, set you know start was going to be zero which 9 kilohertz is the lowest so and then we'd go 10 20 30 40 50 
you know, 60, 70, 80, up to 100 megahertz. So we could have done start and stop if we wanted to, but the center and span is is kind of like you do center, and then span is kind of like using your fingers to pinch and push to zoom in. So you kind of think of it that way. Let me just show you something here. Let's go down and peak, okay? And look at that. Now we just found our peak again, and it says number one, it's the highest peak, 10 megahertz, 6.82 uh, dBms, okay? So then look at all these things here. Let's go next peak. Whoops. Okay, let's do the next peak again. And see, it jumps to the next tallest one, okay? So that's 30 megahertz. See that marker? And it also shows you here. And it shows you the dBs, okay? So let's try that again. And then it comes back here. So uh, you can see that is 50. So the next one's gonna be 70, right? There we go, 70. Now look, now we're, these uh, peaks down here, even though the odd harmonics are usually bigger than the even harmonic next to it, once you get down here, they're all so low that they're getting lower than the second, the even harmonic. So let's see what happens. There's no valid peak. <laughs> okay, so it goes back to this one. So that's uh, 20 megahertz. That's our second harmonic. So our fundamental is the 10 megahertz. So that's one way to read your peaks, okay? Another thing is you've got this peak table. You can click on this and look, it shows you your first harmonic, you know, that's actually your third, right? And, but if you come down here to the table, you can see what they are, 10 megahertz. That's that number one up here. And that's just, that's our marker right there. But number two, you can see the numbers three, and then four, and then five is underneath that one. If I could maybe move that, move it off. See, there's five. Here, I'll move this marker around. See, if I go peak search, it just finds the tallest peak. Okay, but anyway, you can read these tables. It's 10, 30, 50, 70, and then it goes to 20, and it starts getting all kind of jumbled up as they get really small, but it reads out a whole bunch of peaks. So we've got all the way down to 20 harmonics right here. And by then it's down to minus 47 dBm. That's just a quick way to take your measurement and, you know, see what you're doing, okay? So these are your first two. Oh, and I said trigger, huh? See, we don't have a trigger because we're not triggering off of an edge of something that's time-based. We're, we're not triggering on frequencies because we're just looking randomly. Well, you know, scanning across to see what frequencies across this 100 megahertz it can find, and that's what I found, okay? So, bandwidth, that's, that, I think it's time to kind of talk about that one. Here, let's go to, let's go back to auto. Okay, now, see that 10 kilohertz bandwidth over here? Let's go to bandwidth, and it says 10K, right? So let's change that to one meg. See how wide it is? It's, what it's doing is it's scanning across looking for frequencies. It's looking at things one megahertz wide. So since this thing had a two megahertz span on that auto thing, it's looking at half the screen, you know, as for a frequency. And so it's averaging it all out. So that's why it's called resolution bandwidth. So let's go down to 20K. Much better, right? Still, if there's a frequency close to it, it would be captured in part of that and it'd be lost. So let's go, uh, now we've seen what it looks like when we go to 10K, right? But let's go to 1K. Now look at that. So even during 10K, if there was something in here, we would have missed it. Now, I'm going to go back to 10K for a minute. And what I want you to do is kind of look at this. This is, you know, some people refer to the noise floor, 
you know, the, the grass, the weeds, whatever. But look at that. As, as we're scanning across the screen, filtering out one ki kilohertz thing, and then we see this, and we go, okay, we captured something. And it places it in a one kilohertz bin. Well, right now we're doing 10 kilohertz, right? So it's scanning across, and everything within the 10 kilohertz space as it's coming across, it's uh, averaging all that information into all this stuff, okay? So you notice the shape of that, it's pretty much the shape of all these other things in here, right? All right, so now if I go back to that one kilohertz, I'll do it here, 1K. Now you see how fine of tooth, and also since it's looking for a, a one kilohertz band, it's, it's, only, it's not averaging a lot of information together, it's doing it for every one kilohertz. So what it essentially does is it pushes the noise floor down. So you can see how this, now if you see all these spikes, they're kind of the width of this one, right? Because it's one kilohertz, uh, like buckets, if you will. And so, so that's what it's doing. And also you notice this 6.76, this is gonna get more fine tuned to a you know more accurate number as you, you know, as it's, a, instead of averaging some of this noise around to the left and right of it, it's just focusing in on that one clock frequency, okay? So how low can we go? I'm not sure. Let's try 10 hertz just for fun. Now, the one thing about doing real fine resolution is it just takes longer for it to sweep across and, and take all that information and mathematically uh, work with it. Well, filter it. So that's going to take some time, right? <laughs> I don't know how much time. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. See it over on the left side? It's like, uh, dude, this is, and now look, minus 83 is down here at the bottom, so it's pushing it below the minus 83 line. That's why it's looking like a flat line. It's not really flat. It's just because, you know, that's the way we're looking at it. So instead of going uh, 10 dBs, I could have gone maybe 20 dBs. Should we do that? Let's do that. As it's sweeping, let's, I'll switch this over. And instead of saying uh, 10 dBs, right here, the scale per division, I'm going to go 20 dBs. I mean, now we're all the way down here at minus 180. That's pretty darn low. And just to speed this up, let's go to... Um, 200 hertz. All the difference. <laughs> so, okay, so I could go back to amplitude and instead of saying 20, just do 15 maybe. Heck, I probably could have gone back to 10 again, right? So, yeah, it makes all the difference in your and how much information you're getting there. So, um, so bandwidth. And also we have this uh, VWB uh, filter here. I'm gonna do this one at 100. Let's do three times better. Whoops, hit the wrong thing. There we go. Yeah, so now, you know, it's knocked it down a bit, right? So, looking better. So, yeah, that kind of gets you around, kind of giving you a feeling of how you set it. So, you set your reference up here at the top of the screen. The, you know, you want to have some headroom. So, you set whatever reference level when you do amplitude. You set this reference. See, right now, it dropped down 1676. Let's go back to 20 because that, that was automatic uh Remember when I hit the auto button? That's what it did. So let me set it back to 20. So it's a nice round number. I could go to 10, I guess. That gets us pretty close to the top. Yeah, there we go. So that's kind of the way you want to do it. You want to, well, see if it's, yeah, I don't know. It's looking like it's averaging now. But what you want to do is you want to spread out your signal as much as you can. So you want to set this close to whatever your peak level is going, going to be and then um, and then set your your scale over here so that you spread it out so your noise floor is down here somewhere. 
So that's the idea of the amplitude and the bandwidth. You can see how that helps you do that. And the frequency, that's how you set this frequency across here. So let's go back to that. And see right now it's 9 to 11 kilohertz, right? So instead of a span of 2 megahertz, let's do a span of 500 megahertz. Let's just see. Well, now we're going to have to change our resolution, right? Our bandwidth. Because that will take forever. So let's go to, uh, I don't know, let's try 1K. Now look, if I didn't do 1K, instead of getting all those harmonics, let's say if I would have done 10K. See how the noise for it came up? I, I, I didn't see the harmonic change, so we still captured them all. So let's do uh, 1 meg. That's certainly going to get rid of... Yeah, look at that noise floor. It's just coming up, right? And you see how each one of these peaks are getting wider and wider? So that's not a good thing, right? We're going to go back to 1K. And that's a pretty nice signal. Now, those are hard to read. We could use our marker and our peak and, and try to look at each one of those things. We could read the difference between them. We can do a bunch of things. But, again, we could also go to... Okay, so here's our peak. We could search for our peak. We know it's going to be the first one, our, our fundamental, right? So what we could do is come down to the peak table and then look at that. And then, you know read that thing so all right guys hope that gave you a, a kind of a quick look at how this is you know fairly easy to use kind of like your first time you ever used a scope might have been a little intimidating but once you start playing with it, you're like oh okay you know i want to start pushing some buttons myself you guys are probably already saying hit that button hit that button <laughs> all right so i hope that helped all right guys that was just a quick video just to give you a quick preview of what this thing can do and kind of how it sets up just to familiarize yourself with it and we're going to do a bunch more with it but yeah got to kind of learn what a spectrum analyzer does pretty cool instruments right let me know in the comments uh thank you unity for sending this out so that it, we can shoot this i left this here because uh, i didn't expect it but they sent me a gift with it to review it so that was nice of them uh there's so many things we can do with this next in the oscilloscope okay let's say you you need a multimeter then an oscilloscope i guess maybe a power supply generator <laughs> but next to the oscilloscope this guy can show you signals that you know it's just hard to get within an oscilloscope you do have that fft mode which we're going to do a video to compare how this works compared to those but yeah just want to do a few more videos on this uh, to kind of uh, show you how it works and what it can do okay so hope you like that one pretty quick easy video right hey thanks for watching see you next time